Hello, and greetings to another episode of Write. Tonight, I'm going to interview author A. Karina Spears and uh, the author of the fantastic new uh, book, Paladin's Honor. First, we're going to do a three-part series of interviews. The first interview session, we're going to talk about general questions about writing. In the second and third interview, we'll get into the details of our fantastic new book, Paladin's Honor. I think you'll really enjoy it. And Karina, it's a really a pleasure to interview you. Thank you, Rick. It's great to be here. Yes. What is your most valuable advice you've ever been given about writing? The most valuable piece was when I was first starting. Right. I was at PenguinCon, of all things, and I got a piece I was working on looked at by a filmmaker. Truly. He, yes, he was looking at manuscripts and stuff, but no one else had shown up. So he went ahead and was willing to look at my piece with another person. I had a writer and I had a filmmaker. Right. And I was sort of apologizing because the first piece was a romance genre piece. And he's like, don't apologize. Right. Well, the romance genre is just as valid as any other genre. And most people have romance in their lives. So it's a subject most people care about. Right. More than they realize. Wow. A lot of films and books have some element of romance in them. It's popular. So never feel you have to apologize. That's really great advice, actually. It was. What do you think is the best way to improve your writing skills? Writing. writing. The first thing is, is to practice writing. You have to write. You have to write. The second thing, it helps to read good writing. When you yeah. see more popular authors who are known for good writing skills, right. you're more likely to fall into more of their cadence, I'd say. Right. If you haven't developed your own yet. It helps to work with somebody else's. It's not a problem to imitate a style while you're practicing yourself. I, it's not, you don't take their work, but you can imitate their voice and it helps you learn your own. Wow. That's really good advice, eh, Karina? Now, what advice would you give to, how do you advise others how to create plot lines? The way I've managed it in the past I used to do more game mastering, so oh really? I start, yeah, I I I still love doing some gaming, but I used a skeleton approach. You started with the skull; that's your main plot. Right. You get everybody lined up. They're starting at the beginning, and you come down the neck. It bifurcates at the shoulders. You've got the main plot running down as the spine, and you have a couple of side plots or information things that they have to gather, a little side quest that have to be done, and you bring it back to the main plot. That's because if you have just a one, one chord running straight through, it tends to be a little dull. There's no experience for the reader to pick out more details from. Right. So you follow that trunk for a long ways, and then you're gonna to come to the hips as you're getting third act. Heads toward the first act, shoulders to hips is the second act, hips down to the feet is your third act. Wow. So at the hips, you're going to have another bifurcation. You have the second major problem with the bad guys or whatever they're facing. They have to come up with different ways to address it. They may have to do more than one plot quest to finish to the end. But right. you bring it down and you come to a completion point. Oh, my God. But that at least gives you a basic of how and when Right. Those things should occur and consider the ribs to be, you know, putting in all the details. And what are you doing? You're fleshing out your skeleton, which is what a story is. Wow, that's really interesting. Uh, what, did, what has helped you most or hindered you the most when writing a book? Uh, time. Having enough time when the words are flowing. Yep. Because you have to. I've, I've sat at my computer for 10 hours and gotten 4,000 words. 10 hours. Wow. And 4,000. For me, that's low. It doesn't matter what speed you're at. That's important. You write at your own pace. However, for me, it should have been between 500 to 1,000 an hour. When I'm really moving, it's between the 8 to 12. Really? For me, others are higher still and some are lower. But you know your speed. You know when it's really coming to you, right. like, oh, I can make it go. I can make it go. And the next thing you know, you've got to go grocery shopping. You've got to walk <laughs> your dog. You've got to go to your That's other job, really whatever it is you've got to do. And then you come back and sit down. Just because you have time doesn't mean it works. Life really tends to get in the way, doesn't it? <sighs> sometimes. It, it's a hard choice sometimes. Yes. Do you find that writing energizes you or exhausts you or both? Both. 
it sometimes depends on the scene. Right. Uh, true, again, true. yeah, it, when you're writing something heavy, even other authors you can name have cried at the death of a character. Oh, I've God. cried physical tears trying oh, to work on a piece more than once. Right. I've, even in Palin's Honor, I got four words one hour. Four. Four they words? They were hard. Incredible. Yes. Once we got up toward chapter 13, I was crying. I could not tell my characters things are going to be okay. <laughs> you can't tell them anything, but I right. had to let it go from their point of view. And their point of view, they don't have all the information the author has. Oh, my God, that's true. Oh, so it can be painful to to push forward during those highly emotional scenes. They move you. And if it's moving you, it's going to move your audience. Yeah, and that's important. If you're bored, your audience will be bored. That's that's really true because if if, if an audience is apathetic, if you're apathetic, because they kind of mirror you, don't they? You're you're writing for yourself, but there's other people who like you. They right. like think like you. They want to read things that are similar to what they like, and if that's what you like, you're probably going to feed into that group just fine. Right. right. I so think write for yourself. It's okay to do that. But make sure that it, the grammar and spelling and everything falls into the right category so they can read it with you. It's not the story. It's usually a limitation on how it's presented. Yes, a lot of writers that are dyslexic have got a real problem with grammar. Yes. And writing spelling words. So they've got uh, to have an editor because dyslexia is a terrible disease, but so many people have it. My former husband had dyslexia. His mother worked to allow him to read right side up, upside down, sideways, backwards, any way you read. He could read it, you know, facing you. And he could oh. write. He could write like mad because he could write no matter what direction it was. He corrected it yep. pretty well. But whatever technique she used and worked with the school with, that I don't know the exacts on. But she was happened to be a childhood development right. uh, specialist originally. So... He, he got more help with it than some do. <laughs> I have other friends who are in engineering and they love reading, but writing is harder for them. That mm -hmm. doesn't mean you can't do it. I've told somebody else the same thing, like write, write first. Whatever words are on the page can be corrected. You can have it edited. You can use a program. You, you can give it to other people. The, take it as high as you can because it costs more to get the editing done if there's more errors. But do it as best you can. And then somebody else can help pull you forward. Right. But no one can put those words on the page for you. That's the limitation. No one can be creative in your place. No one can think like you. You can always learn technique, but you cannot learn creativity. Be you know, yourself. I, I had an author today submit a manuscript. He was so proud of it. And I took it apart, the first chapter. I said he has to choose, improve his word choice. Mm. He was crestfallen. It's and hard. He was writing an action thriller. But he put comedic lines in there that were inappropriate. Oh. And um, he just was crushed by that. So a lot of times a writer expects, expects affirmation from people. And when they don't get it, they're really crushed too, right? It's very much so. At those moments, I would say you have to pause, take a step back. You, right. we're, we're too close to the work. It's like an artist uh, doing a painting. You oh, have to really put it true. aside. You that's have to step really back. True. Yep, that's really true. When you have a little distance, you can look at it and go, okay, I meant it to be this. But other people looking at it have this. Right. It is not necessarily that the person is wrong. However, they're seeing a much larger picture in their head. You know what really helps is to put the manuscript in a drawer for at oh, least yeah. a month without yes. going back to it, without editing. Truth. Honestly, a month, a six month, a three months. Yep. Mine is about three months. Away. I need a break from it or I cannot see it. <laughs> That's it. You've got to get a break from it. Oh, yes. So you can but, look at it with fresh eyes. It's absolutely true. But in his case, seeing it after the break period of any any length, right. he may be able to say, okay, I meant, I meant to have comedic elements, but maybe it came off with more grittiness. And my right. actual style on this particular story should be gritty right. or else i need to change that's it really to true. lighten the tone more than i thought that's really true hey, Karina. really yeah. true 
Now, what would you say is the best money you've ever spent on your writing? Software or? Oh, oddly enough. Conventions or? What's the conventions most are good. Conven conventions are really good. The best, yeah. though, was oddly enough, the face group, group event that we had. We had the Feed the Zombies. And we had about 20 authors or so that set their books down to the 99 cent price point really? for the day. And we ran uh, a whole afternoon of different authors taking over for a couple hours at a shot. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. For 24 hours, we ran a whole event. We would show videos and things and we had a great time. A lot of people came, but that is really a, cool. the same. Pretty cool. It's not the same thing today. It won't work the same today. I can talk to them. I might try and organize something, but there's too many people doing the same thing. You have to change with the times to get ahead of the right. time. Right. Yeah, that's an interesting conundrum, right? Yeah. I mean, readers we, are fractured. They're not in the same places anymore. So you have to keep finding new avenues. Yeah. Now, as writing and publishing a book change the way you see yourself as a writer? Uh, yes. I mean, I just start with in general. I wasn't a writer before. Right. My husband was a writer. I loved him because he could write. It just amazed me. Right. But I couldn't really do it myself so well. Writing for me came because I ended up out of state for a while and I couldn't be around my friends. I couldn't game. I couldn't interact. So I slowed down my gaming mind and really? was able to start writing it. I wanted to finish some story arcs. So I did it with writing. And once I began and I got the discipline, I could keep going. Really? And still game at the same time? I wasn't gaming or at the time. Was uh, gaming kind of counterproductive for your writing? It wasn't that I wasn't in the same state. We couldn't continue. I, the physical people I was with were back at home. So yep. I wrote yep. to finish the stories myself, yep. but I couldn't continue write them. And it grew. Once you have the discipline of sitting in the chair and putting some words on a page, which takes at least two weeks, just like any job, mm -hmm. it is a new thing to learn. You write because you know how to put, make a grocery list or you've written a document, oh, yes. Yes. but that's not the same discipline as sitting for hours at a time and writing a story. Right. People don't realize it. So they think there's something wrong with them. It's a different discipline, just like learning to run a cash register. Yep. That, that's so, true. So keep going, keep trying, right. put in at least a, you know, I try for an hour at a shot. And if you could do right. it five days a week, uh, creating one page a day, by the end of the year, you'll have a novel. Right. Yeah, it's true. That's true. Now, at, at what stages of your life have you found that you've done the most writing? At what stages of ages? Or... I started after 40. 40? Really? Yeah, I started late. That's quite remarkable. Oh, let's see. It, it might have been late 30s, but it was close to that period. I believe wow. it was it's the second half of my life. It wasn't until we had, you know, to move for work that I delve into it. Wow. Now, would you find that anyone in your family kind of disapproves of your writing? And the second part of the question is, does anyone in your family read your books? Yes, to both. I have a large family. And right. one of them was like, don't even give me your book. I don't want it. I don't like anything with it. <laughs> And others were like, you're going to get me a copy, right? right? As soon as it's out, you're going to let me know when it's out. I had some of them right. buy that uh, when the ebook was available ah. and we we're off reading it right away. Others were like, I didn't know. Okay. Some pick it up and others are like, nah, right. I love you, but I want to go out and mow the lawn. I don't want to read a book. Yep. They'd rather watch a movie and that's okay. It's not for everybody, but I do appreciate the ones that are on my side and supporting. <laughs> Does anybody disapprove of your writing though in your family probably i would say similarly my genres aren't necessarily their genres they may like true crime and they may like uh really? country western uh -huh. and things and oh my God. it's just not what i'm writing so they're like eh? i think that's funny that they read true crime and they won't read uh huh your writing but honestly, it, it, different people like different genres, don't they? Absolutely. 
Wow. Um, who's been the biggest supporter of your writing in your lifetime? My biggest supporter. The sole biggest supporter of your uh, writing that's helped you the most. Uh, my former husband was probably the biggest supporter, that and my mom. That and your mom. How yes. did your mom support your writing? She was thrilled that I was getting really? published. And I dedicated uh, Paladin's Honor to her. I've what? made mention of her and acknowledged before, but I dedicated this one to her. She believed I could do whatever I wanted. She'd seen me achieve a lot of things in my life and I had a, a plethora of ability, but it doesn't mean I could focus on any one thing that I wanted to do. Right. Like if this is what you're after, you'll do well. Good. I think that that's really important to have someone that supports your writing, mm. you know, because it's a lonely endeavor to write. Yes. I mean, do you have any other writers in the family besides your ex-husband? Uh, I have a couple that are trying to write and I encourage them to keep going. It's, it does take time. And I, the same thing I've said, don't give up on yourself just because you're finding it a little difficult at the start. It takes time right. literally to get there. It really does. You know, um, people think that Stephen King was an instant success, but he wasn't. Oh, Steinbeck right. wasn't an instant suspect. Um, Mary Higgins Clark wasn't an instant success. You've got to really put the time in. You know, in martial arts, they have a thing called time and grade, hmm. where to get your belt rank, you have to be a first degree black belt is one year of study. And to be a second degree black belt, you got to be two years in the first degree black belt and three and four and five, six, seven, all those years are additive to that. And mm -hmm. I think that's the way it, it is with a writer too. Some instant successes, but not many. It's quite true. Yeah. yeah. There, you can follow the pathways. If you dig around, you'll find how some of those successes looked in right. or hit the market in a specific way at the right moment. Right. But as much as we love Lord of the Rings, that barely got published. It went through several. <laughs> I agree, man. And the end chooser was like a seven or eight year old boy. Yep. Guy passed it on to like his nephew said, what do you think of this? And he said, that's pretty good. <laughs> yep. And if it wasn't for that child that's telling them, yeah, that was a decent read. He was unlikely to read it at all. Right? It was too far out of the usual categories. It was now, too what's different. your... Um... What's your website address, uh, Karina? Acrinaspears.com. And your Facebook page? You can find me at a Karina Spears or a dot Karina Spears on Facebook. It's really a pleasure interviewing you. Um, let's see. For our next interviews, we'll uh, go into the details of your fine, fine, fine book, Paladin's Honor, which I okay. really think is an exceptional book and enjoyable to read. And um, it's really fantastic. So until next time, I wish you a good night and we'll be in for next week and the week after that, right? Absolutely. And I look right. forward to it. Have a great night. You too, right? Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.